Tak, já vás poprosím o pozornost. A, zdravím vás, nebo zdravíme vás. Dneska to totiž je hodně speciální přednáška, protože a, je to první takhle vzdělávací přednáška, kterou organizují dva studentské spolky tady v Prně. Ano, je to možná, že my tomu říkáme unikátní, ono to až tak super jako by není, prostě jsme se domluvili a bylo to o tom, že jsme se vlastně potkali ve jméně, které bychom chtěli představit uh, jakoby na dvou různých akcích a tak jsme si řekli, proč to nespojí vlastně do jedna. Tak, tak, tak. A my teďka jenom v krátkosti představíme naše spolky. Já jsem za spolek, uh, studentský spolek Business Academy, uh, který tady v Brně pořádá různé přednášky a Kuba je za? Za studentko. A stejně jako Ondra a Ondru v tým, tak i my pořádáme přednášky, workshopy a vlastně většinou se to pořádá zde na ekonomickou správní fakultě. Tak a on to, Kuba tak jako maličko schodil, ale ono to je speciální přednáška. Protože vzhledem k tomu, že jsme to pořádali společně, jako dva spolky, tak jsme se rozhodli udělat něco výjimečného, něco navíc. A co jsme udělali? Tak, asi vám to rovnou ukážeme. Jo, na. Je samozřejmě možné, že už jste to viděli předem, což by bylo super. Pokud ne, tak to uvidíte ještě jednou. přednášku připravili a já si myslím, že teď po tomhle videu nemůže přijít už nikdo jiný než pan Kapalbo, takže já bych ho rád přivítal. Tak, dobrý večer, dobrý den. Uh, how you understand my, my check is not perfect. So I will speak English, but maybe you can ask me something in, in Czech uh, after uh, we, we start. I hope that uh, is it okay. We will uh, structure our time together. Thank uh, uh, you for Yeah, thank you. We will structure. We will. Uh, we have a very short presentation, and we have a video. Okay. <laughs> We have a short presentation. We will start with the, with the, with the one minute video to tell uh, what we do. And then together we will try to analyze and to understand uh, uh, what, what we do, why we do, and why we reach the, uh, some uh, achievements. And then uh, uh, let's try to make as more interactive as possible. So any kind of questions, any kind of, uh, of clarification, please, is uh, very welcome. So this is our job. Uh, when, when the people ask me, Pane Kapalbo, na konce co udělate? This is the first answer, yeah? Prosím.
So this is our job. This is uh, basically our uh, life. Um, now we are talking about uh, some people say running, long distance running. Some some people uh, call it athletics. Indeed, uh, I that I work from 20 years in this field, I I am not I am uh, indeed not able to give it a name because this is a phenomenon and uh, like all phenomena, it's not shaped yet. Every day change. Let's see now at which uh, stage we are uh, right now. Okay, first information that the, in uh, Europe, 28 countries in Europe, the market has a value of 15 billion euros, over 400 million coroni. So this is the first data. People, they didn't think it was so big, but, uh, and uh, run 48 million people all over Europe, out of which one third run out from home. So if I live in Brno, I go to run in Wieden, in Prague, in uh, Warsaw, yeah? One third of those 48 million. And this is what's happened in the, in the, in the, in the world. Uh, you see that uh, running before was uh, for very few people. I, I should tell you that 22 years ago I was running in Prague uh, with the shirts and in the normal street and I saw people, so, so Dila, that, you know, people thought I was completely blasen. And that was, <laughs> was yeah, indeed, and that was around the 93, 95. These regard the words, and you see that uh, at, in the middle of uh, 80s, there was the first peak. And this was approached by male, usually, professional upper class, was trendy to do jogging and to run. Yeah? And that was uh, 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 in the middle of 80s. That was mainly in the States. In Europe, this is, uh, was not uh, yet uh, there, the phenomenon. Then uh, we had uh, another uh, peak in uh, 2002, 2004, 2005, in the middle of 2000, where uh, basically there was not running only the upper class, but was running ordinary people, upper middle class, and for the first time, the women started to be not an exception in the running events, but started to have a weight of 20, 25, 30% with some difference. Scandinavia, Skoro Paresat percent. Greece, uh, maybe 20%, with uh, some differences. And then, that was, that's is basically the um, uh, amount of uh, finisher per marathon in the period. Now, this is uh, where the people that run, uh, where this is a map of sports. Uh, usually, you see those maps in uh, pyramids, no? Instead, you see, this is according to income. Basically, the people, very, people very welcome, very wealthy, they play sport, they do sailing, and running is in the upper middle class. So, uh, is on the on the fourth uh, on the fourth uh, fourth uh, level, and that means that also light runners, not professional runners. Here we have a professional one. Where is the pan panomolach Irka? Tak. This is this is a, a top elite Czech athletes, uh, my dear friends. Yeah, it's one of our champions. Maybe it's uh, the best uh, among the three best athletes in our country. Yeah. Shall we do an applause for him? And then now what is happening? And uh, indeed, uh, an Ovinka, uh, people did not expect. And then you see that lately, two, three years ago, they start to grow like uh, mushrooms. They start to grow color run, electric run, run against the nature, uh, and other things. And uh, even in Czech Republic, we had uh, a color run, and this is organized by a friend of mine. He didn't do any particular activity. In two weeks, he had 25,000 people on, uh, on Facebook. And the race uh, was sold out in two weeks. So now, we have not only upper middle class, 
we have not only people from mainly from 30 to 40, that is the bulk of the people that run, but we have people from 18 to 28 that they approach running. Madame Mam Otashka Provashe, do you think this is running, the same run that uh, Irka runs? Is it something different? Maybe it's a sport entertainment, uh, it's not professional run, but anyway, this is the family and is a part of the phenomenon. And if we go to see now the estimated number of runners, this for you is another surprise, is as well for me. Uh, there are 49, al almost 50 million people that this is a study done by 10 universities in Europe. It's a study that takes two years. There are 50 million people in Europe that they, from 15 to 65, that they declare that they run. Not because they run, all of them run marathon. First of all, they run marathon, half marathon, the sitka, other races, or they run just as a training for their other sport and so on. In Czech Republic, we have 750,000 people, so it's 10% of the people from 15 to 64 that they run something. Yeah? And another data that is also important, before uh, there were not uh, shops uh, for running. I don't remember 10 years ago that there were shops only specialized for running. Now there are shops and there are even uh, big shops <laughs> also specialized only for running. And we see that uh, in Czech Republic uh, there is a 100 average is 130 euro that people spend only for themselves, means uh, tricho, de facto tricho and shoes. This doesn't include, of course, all the other expenses per races and so on. So the information for you is that, uh, like in 90s, when arrived this, uh, you remember this uh, big uh, balicek with the mobile phone, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Who could think in 95 that now we sell billions for 1,000 euro each? Boom, there was an explosion and no one could predict it. We are more or less in the same situation. The only difference is that before we were talking about the product, now we are talking about ourselves. Before we were buying products, now the phenomenon, we are buying experience. We want experience and we want to test ourselves in experience. And that is a clear sign that the society has changed. Let's uh, now talk what we do. Um, I need to tell you, even though I speak English, I am Skoroczewski, Stobrsent. <laughs> and uh, uh, I work with uh, 39 Czech colleagues and uh, we are a team of indeed 40 people. Uh, we have, of course, we are based in Czech Republic. We have a small office in Beijing because in China, everything you do, you multiply for thousands. So we must be there and we work there. And, uh, uh, but uh, the experience is a Czech experience, is a Greenfield experience, is been thought, executed, and implemented here in the Czech Republic where you live and where we both of us lives. The Run Czech events, believe or not, for me is, a, is, is still a Zazrak, but has been quoted the best race in the world in terms of quality. When I say the best race in the world, I include New York, London, Boston, Tokyo. Well, the Run Czech events, all Run Czech events, all what we do has been uh, 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 a sign, Zlatos uh, Namka, basically this is like in other sports, Extra Liga, Premier Liga, Drua Liga, in the athletics, in the long distance running, there is a Zlato, Stribo and Bronze Snamki, and uh, the, all together there are 81 Snamki in the world on 30,000 events, there is uh, only 39 uh, gold, and Czech Republic has 7 gold. So we live indeed in a running hub. We live in, a, in an excellent place uh, for running. Maybe somebody say uh, uh, running country. Those are the events uh, that we do. 
And uh, let's talk now about the impact that we generate. You know, when we talk about sport, I don't know what you prefer, football or hockey or basket. When you, you have in mind sport, you have a competition, you have, uh, I don't know, we talk about football, you have 22 people that play, and then you have 10, 20,000 divaku, people that watch. The same in basket, of course, different number, okay. Uh, here, what we do is a little bit uh, special sport for one reason. I win even though if I don't win. Oh, you say, Carlo, what are you talking? This is not sport. But indeed, I win if I complete. So this is a sport, and the society itself is moved from competing to completing. Yeah? So I am happy, I achieve what is the best in my life if I finish it. Why? Because I'm not a divaku, because I participate. So let's start to see the sport in completely different view as we are usually used to see sport. And so we have, of course, a sport impact. I, uh, I, told, uh, I talked before about the sport team. This is the performance of Rancek. This is uh, on the left uh, our uh, Sauteshni competitive race. On the right, our non-competitive race altogether run with us about 80,000 people. And which are the sport impact? We have times that they are close to the uh, world record, both in marathon, in 10K, in half marathon, and all the, maybe 80% of the top 20 runners in the world, they came to run here, including, of course, our, uh, uh, our Czech elite runners. And that is one aspect. Why? If uh, Pavel Nedved goes to play in Juventus, Juventus goes up because he's a star. So we have a, we have a star in our races. And by the way, in Moravia, the Olomouc is the city with the biggest star. World record holder, um, gold medal, and so on. <coughs> All they came to run in uh, Olomouc, which my friend still call Olomouc because uh, until 10 years ago, was difficult to find Olomouc on the map. Unfortunately, many no, no, it's true. Many people know when uh, outside you think that everybody is super intelligent. Many people they still call us Czechoslovakia. They know Prague, they know Havel, they know, know for the Grand Prix and for other things. But that's it. So I think that uh, what do we do, and we will talk later, also contribute to a better knowledge of our country outside. The sport impact. What we care is also for uh, uh, young people. You know that uh, our society degenerated a bit. Our kids, they don't run, they don't exercise anymore. Uh, obesity in 2026 will substitute Rakovina as a cause of death. This is a tragedy. So uh, what is we consider as well our mission is to work with, uh, with the kids and with the young people. There is then an economic impact. Uh, and the economic impact, uh, how we reach this economic <coughs> impact, this is what we do world, uh, worldwide. So we have uh, all our uh, race Pshimipchenos, uh, and they go all over the world. Uh, we, uh, we, 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 do, uh, we work on uh, special projects that are aimed to increase the popularity and the knowledge of what we do abroad. Of course, we work on the net. We, we do PR, press conference here and outside, print advertising, direct marketing, and all these generate the following. Over 180,000 people attending the Czech events, those are certified data. It's about 35,000 people that they take uh, planes, out and about trains, and they came to run our races. 114 nationalities, uh, so it's a, 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 the most international event, Prague Marathon is the most international event worldwide, percentage-wise. 14, well, 13.7 million euro, those people, they did spend directly for hotel, restaurant, souvenir, and a few other things. 
and we created the 375 full-time job position, new job position. This is the economic impact that uh, generated by, by the, this kind of activity that we do. Then there is uh, uh, Zdravi, or uh, health impact. Unfortunately, as I told you, uh, we have uh, in Europe, uh, well, in the States it's horrible, as you know. <laughs> in Europe we are close, we are getting close. We have almost 30% of the population that is defined obese, and that is uh, very bad news. Uh, the young people, they don't, uh, they don't uh, exercise, so basically what do we do? We try with the young, with the no young, with the family, with the, not, with the professional, semi-professional, we try one of the main uh, aim is to make the people run and move. Then there is a social impact. Uh, this is uh, um, strange and, and original uh, because uh, during those events, I don't know when it started, but maybe uh, uh, because those events uh, basically, as you can see, includes not only normal people, healthy people, really, yet pro cash deo, no, as you say, is for everybody. So those events basically generate initiative of solidarity, uh, charity, and those are our number in 2015. We collected 270,000 euro, uh, 5,200 5, 5, runners, they run uh, for charity, and we work with 26 uh, Nadatse, de facto. What we did 10 years ago, 10 years ago we tried to contribute ourselves but we really the impact was almost uh, close to zero. Then we tried to tell to our runners, why don't you give 10% of your Prilashka to charity and we give the other 10%. As well did not work, I believe because people must know where the, their money goes and this, uh, it is very right. So what's happened? We understood about five, six years ago that our capacity, now today is 80,000, but we have a request for maybe 120,000, 130,000 people that they want to run our event. Think now, today, is all Viprodano for all next year. De facto, there is just a few thousand, so 75,000 people, they already bought everything for our races for next year. So what's happened? That uh, we have a capacity of sub desati seats and we sell sedum desati seats. So the last 10,000, we give those numbers to Nadatsi, to this organization. So the people that, the other 50,000 people in the world or in Czech Republic, that they want to enroll, they can buy only from this Nadatsi. And so at the end, the people pay one, uh, Start of me that cost uh, 500 crowns, they pay 5,000 crowns, 8,000 crowns. Last year there was a, a record 15,000 crowns because the people want to run. Maybe they have booked the plane, the hotel, or maybe they promised to Mangel Canebo Mangel. Maybe uh, they wanted to run, so they are ready, and there are people with the money, they are ready to pay everything, and they devote 500 for the Prilashka and 14,500 for project. And we have, uh, of course, a few beautiful and useful projects. Uh, how we do social impact? We have also other activities that uh, facilitate the contact, facilitate the sharing. A few days ago, a friend of mine told me, Carlo, the only thing that doubles when you share yeah, rados. Yeah? So we try to share our rados, our enthusiasm, so we double and we share among all people and all our friends. So we have uh, a house uh, of running in Prague, it's three floors, training center, fitness center, as you see, kitchen <laughs> where our uh, runners, elite runners, which they live very close, they cook. We have a water bar and so on. We organize races uh, all over the year. Here there is Valentin run. We have a free run. It's a 
an application uh, that uh, regards all over uh, uh, Czech Republic. We certified the course all over, and people downloading this application, they can run and they can share and run together with other people. We have uh, co-runners. Uh, my colleague calls Polubiecki, I call Biezeska Sesnamka. Don't laugh, don't say it. But basically, many people are home. They are always uh, closed. They are, of course, they are very digital. They talk digital with everybody. They are very high tech, but it's missing the eye touch. Talking with people, look people in the eyes, and so on. So, some people they can run five kilometers and they need the co runners. So they can go on this application, it's a social platform, and they can find runners, friends, and then, uh, I don't know, women <laughs> challenge, because women is the fast growing uh, sector. Women, uh, they grow, if they, uh, what we do, grow 20% per year. There is any other industry that grow 20% per year, as far as you know? I don't think so. When we have grow two, three percent, four percent, wow, it's big. We grow twenty percent. Within this twenty percent, forty percent is made by women. So the women grow faster, indeed, than uh, than the market. And then run check racing is a team of uh, top runners that we have, like in bicycle, we have Festina, uh, Sky Team, Astana. We have run check racing, and those people run with run check all over the world, yeah? And then, uh, uh, this is the running mall, just to let, to show you what is. This is a place to be together. I always had the dream in my life to open a pizzeria, restaurant, or cafe to host my friends. Now, we can do, and we can host everybody, not only runners, but people basically in love with the positive uh, lifestyle. And then there is political impact. Don't worry, I will not talk about ANO, CSSD, ODS, no. Political impact is indeed how much we contribute to create other icons regarding Czech Republic. Czech Republic, of course, is uh, famous in the world. Zlata uh, Prava, beautiful Bernot, okay. Uh, <laughs> and so on. We want to present our country that is modern, that is active, that is beautiful. You know that 90% uh, of the tourists, they stop in Prague and they don't see, they don't know the regions, so they don't know the country. They don't know a country that is the highest per, per capita number of castles compared to the population. People outside, they don't know. Honestly, there are a lot of kept secret. So what do we try to do? Because we have such a visibility abroad. And when you have a shimmy channels, you don't look only the runners. You look the background, you know? So we show the country. We wanted to present it as green, as active, as uh, beautiful, Russia, and trendy. Yeah, because a country, like a company, like uh, a product, must be branded. So now another task we have, which should be <coughs> for Czech Republic, and that is the biggest uh, sport paper in China. The number of readers is about 60 and something millions uh, there. And you see this is the cover page. And then this is the Fifth Avenue in New York, where, uh, because New York City Marathon uh, created a, a partnership with Runcheck, this is the parade in uh, in. Uh, in, uh, in the Fifth Avenue in New York. <coughs> and then uh, uh, the political aspect, uh, what, is, what is the message? When we do an event, let's assume there are uh, 10,000 runners, <coughs> then there is, uh, if the event is 10,000, 1,200 volunteers, there are minimum a couple of thousand people that they work. Infrastructure, uh, Mieska Polizia, Polizia Sieska Republica, Asici, Dopravni Polizia, Company that clean, uh, Zakrana, and, uh, and, and many others, including, uh, you know, also Ceske Drai, CSA. So maybe the political news outside, and I guess in this period we need a lot of good, positive political news outside about Czech Republic to compensate a bit 
dobra sprawa is that indeed Czech Republic funguje. Because if we got the gold label and we are quoted about the best race in the world, it's not because of 40 people that work in Czech, because the whole system works and works extremely well. Yeah? That is also a political message. So, how, how we can uh, contribute and, um, and improve if you are uh, a race organizer, never forget about quality, because before quality was perceived as a sign of profit. Now quality is uh, a, a, a pillar of surviving. Without quality, no company, no brand, no firma will go on. Institutions, uh, Basically, I had the luck to meet a lot of intelligent people within the institutions. Don't laugh, it's possible. <laughs> and so, uh, 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 basically, institutions should promote those kind of events because promoting those kind of events, this is a fantastic tool of promotion of the city, of the crime, of the community in general. Partners, uh, partners means uh, sponsors, but indeed the work uh, in an in a, uh, atmosphere of partnership and uh, intercept those uh, progressive achievers. I call the people that run because they are achievers, but they are progressive. So they are ethically strong, uh, environmentally friendly, and in general looking for a better lifestyle. Uh, runners uh, basically share your uh, passion with the family and friends, and uh, spectators basically to come and see and to indeed uh, participate. And that uh, is all. But then, as usual, uh, maybe because my origin is Italian, I always talk about spaghetti that with the parmesan are better. But in general, any dort with the sherry on top, no, is better, no? So uh, uh, at the end, we always, uh, we try to innovate. And I am among uh, innovator brilliant young students, so our future. So I feel that uh, I'm talking to the right audience and, and you understand what I'm saying. So every year we try to create something. And sometimes we are so ambitious or so crazy that we wanted to create not something that is just something, something that is on top in the world, something where I mean, the satisfaction is that normally the big innovation, Apple is, Apple is created in San Francisco, then Google in, uh, in uh, Seattle, uh, then other things are created in London and, uh, or in New York, and we want to create something in Prague that then all the world then watch us. So those are a set of innovation. We, uh, okay, there is still this wine there. I talk about uh, clean uh, lifestyle, sorry for the wine, but the wine is travel, no? Yes, travel? <laughs> so, we, we um, there are journalists that write books on us, not only on us, where we live. Uh, there is a digital marathon which I, I wanted to show you. We create, uh, in this case, in Prague, uh, Championship Liga among the Mieski Chast. Adidas created, I think for the fifth time in the history of Adidas, they created the shoes for the uh, football team when they were a championship in 74, the first time. Then uh, in three other occasions, and now Adidas created a line called Rancek, Praski Marathon. So, and they can buy this in Germany, in Austria. Then uh, the famous marathon wine, the medals, and then the digital marathon. Digital marathon is something that was never created before. It's something that is a complete innovation. In English, you would say quantum leap. So from uh, the normal phone to smartphone, boom, it's a jump, technological jump. was launched in Prague one month ago, and now we are going to launch all over the world. And this is a Czech idea. This is a Czech uh, product. And we will see, basically, a short movie of it. Maybe we can uh, we can see it. And uh, thank you. Let's see the movie, and then uh, we can uh, talk. The mo- yeah, huh? So, what is this? What we did? We filmed our event before 
I know that in Brno there is a just met one hour ago two uh, young, uh, brilliant, uh, two young, brilliant uh, professionals that they are developing something similar. Let's hope that we will cooperate uh, then in the future. This is indeed a mixed reality. So we filmed the marathon before, and we will give the chance to people all over the world, critically, to run a drug marathon. Our goal is on the 8th of May, 10,000 people will start in Prague, and 10,000 people will start at the same time. So 5 o'clock in the afternoon in Tokyo, 3 o'clock in the morning in Brno, and then we run a Prague marathon. And then we have two dislike kids. The one they run in Prague and the one they run around in the world. Let's see it briefly. Okay, this is uh, basically <laughs> basically four people, ten people, they can run one in New York, one in Zag, one in Brno, one in Vienna, one in Russia, or I don't know. They can run together and then uh, indeed they can see on the same uh, screen. This is another motivation, Dalshi Croc, another attempt to make the people move. Because when we move, we don't only exercise our body, but also it's good for lava, no? The endorphin, enthusiasm, and so on. So, this is what we do. I am sure uh, you have a lot of questions. How is possible to reach maybe this kind of success with a lot of luck? <laughs> uh, uh, how we started uh, and... Uh, how, which kind of difficulties we had at the beginning, because it was only myself, Angelka, uh, my neighbors, and a few friends that believed that this would happen, and instead it did happen, and now is a, a very solid uh, product, successful, well known, and I believe uh, a big contribution to the image of the country outside. On top, we make a lot of people happy and feel better. And that is uh, another kind of satisfaction. Of course, in business, you are happy if you sell something and somebody pay you. We are lucky enough that we are happy as well because we know that the people that follow what we say, what we suggest, then they feel better. Yeah? So. There is any questions that uh, I, I, I would be happy to answer? Why have you moved to Czech Republic? Because uh, I, am, I feel that I am like you. I was born in a European region. I studied in another European region. I live in a European region now, and I will work maybe in another European region. So if you would say, Carlo, why you moved to the States? Well, I go abroad there. There must be some choice. But, uh, it's relatively not important how I moved to Czech Republic, but the, what is important that I feel in Europe, so I feel uh, in the same country where I was born, just I speak a bit different language, and uh, I, have, I drink more beer than vino, but this is a small difference. 
but uh, basically, but how I moved by Czech Republic? By chance, because uh, I was uh, doing a, a normal job. I was a, a corporate manager of a large company for Europe, and uh, after uh, 90, uh, I <coughs> you need to understand that we grow up uh, having uh, only half of Europe available. The other half of Europe, we only heard beautiful things, but we never could experience. So after the, the wall fell down, me as a European citizen was almost a moral duty to experience uh, you know, this other part of Europe. And uh, that is why the reason was here. I, I did not have any Pschitelkinia, like most Italians, they come here because they get in love with the beautiful Czech ladies. Or I did not have any other interest. I had just a, if you want to call it, political interest. Of course, then I find a job. And then after uh, two years, I was here. Uh, of course, uh, all my friends say, Carlo, are you in Prague? We come. OK, you come, let's see. One of those friends was a gold medal, Olympic, and the winner of Boston, champion of the world. So when uh, you, you have a friend and they come to see you, say, what do you do? Them and our people, them have hospital, no? So we talk uh, from... Uh, and uh, we went, and this gentleman asked me, uh, he was winner at the 88 in Olympic in Seoul, no? and then in Boston in 1990. And so he asked me, Carlo, why don't you do a marathon? I was a professional sportsman a long time ago. So I said, I never done a marathon. I mean, I never organized a marathon. I have run a lot in my life, but never organized a marathon. And basically, he told me, Carlo, in order to do an event like this, you need the fantastic background, and Czech Republic is very beautiful, in that case it was Prague. You need the sport tradition. This is the country of Emil Zatopek. Some people forget, but this is uh, not only one of uh, three gold medals and so on, but this is one, uh, not only one of the greatest athletes of the century. I, I had the privilege to know him, one of the great, greatest men yeah, I have never met in my life, so the tradition and the space. So I said, this is a plaza. I have never done a marathon. Then after uh, another beer, uh, he said, <laughs> suddenly he called Emil Zatopek because they were friends, two gold medals and so on. So he called Emil Zatopek. We ended in, uh, in, uh, in the house of Zatopkovi. And you know they are Moravian. So they're very nice people. Open, we left uh, 9 o'clock in the evening. And I had on... Uh, I had uh, uh, the first trasa of the Prague Marathon, original of the Mr. Zatopek. And that was uh, the start. First year were very difficult because really the people uh, thought uh, that uh, was completely out of mind. And then maybe this can be useful to you because uh, I'm sure uh, you have a lot of dreams. This is the right age for dreams. Keep dreaming and keep having visions. Of course, uh, the visions then, they should be supported. The vision cannot be always vision. You should work in order to make this vision real or more, to make the other perceive that your vision are real. And then uh, you will see that those vision will, uh, will happen. And then uh, will happen and then will come uh, popularity, will come success will come money, because at the beginning, when you have only vision, there are no money, you know? And so uh, that is the story of what we have done. So if you have a vision, or if you have a dream, don't give up and carry on uh, to dream. Uh, you need to be strong, because there will be tough time, suffering, what I'm doing, I am alone. Uh, it's completely no one recognizes, no one approve it, but please carry on, don't give up. If I if I should tell you my experience. Yeah. <laughs> so may I ask you, uh, you are focusing just on running. And there is an idea in the Republic to organize some races of Giro d'Italia of cycling. And you are an Italian. And you've got some I should, uh, I should go and bike, yeah. No, no, I, I, know, I know about this. 
And uh, by the way, you point out something that, uh, because uh, one way how to call what we do, maybe we can call it mass participation. And when we talk about mass participation, when uh, indeed mass participation is running, bicycle, triathlon, yeah, this is indeed mass participation. So uh, as well as running, bicycle is indeed uh, the same uh, kind of impacts that uh, is, uh, is running, because the things are quite similar. And uh, I know that the Giro d'Italia is, uh, I think, is starting uh, uh, next year, yeah? Is it true? Yeah, 16 or 17? 17. 17, yeah. It's starting the first etap will be here in the Czech Republic, yes. Yeah, I'm sure it will be, will be, will be beautiful. Uh, uh, friends of mine, uh, which I know them, they organize it, so they, they, they told me about the organization, yes. I'm sure it will be beautiful, and it will be popular, and it will help uh, you know, people that go by bicycle, uh, or uh, in general, we let the popularity of the country, because uh, as you know, Giro d'Italia then goes worldwide, and is uh, live TV. So it's a, it's a good step, I think. And would you like to participate on the organization of that? As a runner? Or uh, uh, I should, uh, uh, go in there? This is only for professional. No, we will see. They ask me, of course, uh, those people, when they had this idea, we consult together. I only could say that the Czech Republic is the home of people that go by bikes. So they didn't help it. They ask me other things and so on. But we, we are not uh, officially involved in the organization. Tak jestli nejsou žádné další otázky z publika zatím, tak konečně přichází na řadu mluvých chvíl, nemusím tu stát až do teď, tak do blbě. Asi se přesuneme teda na otázky ze slajdu, we will continue with uh, questions from slajdu. So I would like to pick, uh, for example, uh, are you thinking of expanding the brand run check to other surrounding countries, obviously under specific name, uh, run Slovakia, run Poland, and so on? Yeah. Uh, Somebody asked me, Carlo, why don't you do a race in Brno, which is a very beautiful city, the second largest city in the country, or why we do in Pilsen in Ostrava? Uh, my answer because uh, there are good people and good professionals in Brno, in Ostrava, and Pilsen, where indeed they can organize, and I'm telling they will organize something uh, here. Uh, in Brno, Ostrava, Pilsen, they already do in Pardubice. So uh, my answer is that it's okay if we do half, the other half should be left and uh, should be given prostor, misto, uh, or space to other organize first. And second, uh, now Czech Republic is uh, very consistent, uh, almost look like a footprint, so it's perfect. And, uh, but I, I think that now our space is outside Czech Republic, in the region. And what we are doing in the near future, you will see Trancek, which is a Czech company, will uh, associate, buy, take over, do together, manage other events in Germany, Poland, Italy. So this is indeed the the future uh, in the next uh, couple of years. There are, of course, Rancheck is very popular, so some people, they uh, already try it. So there is Run Greece, and they all write to us. Yeah. Run Greece, Run Ukraine, Run Croatia, Run Germany, so, and they ask us how to do the mechanism, because this is a, a liga where the woman can beat the man. So it's not a Liga on absolute uh, time, but it's a Liga also based a little bit on golf, on the handicaps. So basically people with the lower experience, they can beat uh, in the championship people with the bigger experience. So there are other run checks, run, runs Poland, around, runs around, but they are not by us. Maybe we think about run Europe, so. <laughs> And are you thinking about uh, making a run check marathon here in Brno in the future? Uh, 
In Brno, as I, as I told, there, are, uh, there is a very strong team of people in Brno, I don't know if you know, they wanted to do a, a, a half marathon. We helped them and we will help them to do it. But for what regards Brno, I think that uh, there are already very good people. Why we should <coughs> come here to do something? Maximum we can do it together with the local team. This question from Slido, how to make popular another kind of running sports like a biathlon, uh, orienteering running, etc. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> how to make it uh, uh, popular in general. I mean, if uh, uh, we, we, of course we can and uh, already we cooperate with some uh, orienteering events. Uh, and we always uh, offer them uh, hospitality, cooperation, sport practice. So we uh, basically uh, help those kind of events. On the other side, uh, orienteering uh, is in the nature. We run on the street. So I'm sure that when the overall industry and the overall market grow, there will be, and there will be more and more sophisticated and mature, will be more people that they choose the street, or they choose a stadium, or they choose a countryside, trial. Okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, failing. Uh, so Fail? was, uh, failing? Like, what was the biggest fail when you started Grand Check and the biggest challenge you had to encounter? Many. <laughs> Many. Oh, I did a few mistakes, of course. Uh, the, 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 the biggest... Uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, I come and I grow up in a country that was a capitalist from 46, 47. So I experience in my life before coming here, I experience already this guy. When I arrived here, the first year, uh, there was an immense love for money, 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 and uh, the people could not believe that for me, money is one component of the profit. It's not the only component. So when I was going to institutions and asking maybe support for this or Povoleni for this and so on, at the beginning, the people had in mind only that we do it for money, not for spirit of service. Instead, now is much easier because the people can quantify the benefits. They are not economic. They can quantify the fact that the uh, city of uh, uh, Carlo Vivari is more popular because uh, we do this big action and they are coming for it. They can quantify that uh, their population is much more healthy because everybody run in all moods and so on. So it's, uh, it's uh, different. But at the beginning, it was quite difficult. And then, of course, uh, again, uh, talking to institutions, you, uh, it, this uh, Poslanets or this uh, Radni, they represent uh, their interest, no? From they come from. And maybe sometimes there was some uh, uh, conflicting interest on, uh, on what we were doing. And sometimes I had some uh, difficult time because uh, those people can uh, block, indeed, uh, those, uh, those kind of events. So, and then uh, the mistakes, there are too many. <laughs> I don't remember. But I did, of course, uh, some mistakes. Maybe uh, the mistakes I did, are, uh, they were due to not to be enough patient. Because, uh, of course, when you do something, you want to do fast, and you want that everybody understand, that everybody support you, and so on. Instead, you need the time. Because the time is the best uh, medicine, you know, to slowly and gradually make people understand and feel convinced about uh, their choices. Okay, so next one from Slido. We, we have here a uh, quite interesting question. Do you think that the digital marathon or digital running is uh, the future of the running? Uh, well, uh, it's not uh, uh, the future, uh, but uh, you know, there are, first of all, there are 37 million uh, pass, 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 uh, trade mills installed in the world. 
And I must tell you something. Every time I go on the trade mill, not many times, I feel a little bit bored. I feel that I don't have a motivation. Huh? So I prefer to go and play football or volleyball or to run. Yeah? So uh, we believe that the digital marathon will help. Will help in three ways. First, will help because all the people that maybe they wanted to run a Prague marathon, they will receive a video and they can try, if you see the mixed reality, they can try to run before. And when you try something on the trail wheels, then of course you feel to do it real. Second, it's uh, important because uh, uh, we can do events, and the events is fun, and the people are looking for experience and for fun. So, like in our center, we organize uh, events among people, what you can name in a fitness center, you know? And the third is the touristic impact. If 10,000 people in May, they will run a Prague Marathon, so they will see all the city as it's real, I think this is an immense uh, touristic impact and uh, a boost for, uh, in this case, our uh, La Miesta. But the future will be that we will put all our events digital. So basically the people can choose non, not only to run uh, Prague Marathon, but to run Chesco huh? or the Republic. How many people uh, do you need for Prague Marathon? How many people work there? <laughs> so I think that uh, we are about 38 people that work um, full time with us. Uh, then uh, during the season, uh, March, September, we become indeed 55, 60. And then on every event, there is from uh, 700 volunteers in the smaller race to 1,500 volunteers, Doda Vatel and all the other people that uh, contribute to make this outdoor event going well. It's a very complex machine because uh, there is no Zitra, I keep saying to my friends. So what you have to do, you have to do nachas and you have to check it. So we have uh, for every event a big manual that is a master organization plan and for every minute we have a what to do and then what if. If Carlo Mate Plota, what we do? Yeah? On what, what's happened if there is a crisis? Yeah. So you need to go at this level of details to organize uh, an event without problems. Yeah. Do you have any run check race that you prefer the most? Yeah, is I, I love all, the, of course, what I do, and you never say these things. But when you go uh, in Olomouc, Olomouc is about uh, 95,000 people, Obiratel, run 10,000 people, so you imagine almost 10% 10 of the population. And the most beautiful things, all everybody in the street, but including uh, Babichka out of the window. No, no. <laughs> so this is when you get this. That means uh, you you, might, you have a uh, success. Yes. I'd like to also ask you, Carol, when you were at the beginning, in the beginning that you had a vision, and there were people around you, and you want to. Do I almost am tempted to say I don't remember because I am shy to say what I did. I went to the mayor, I had a meeting with the mayor. Uh, when I came to Czech Republic, I was I came from the big company and I wrote a book. So I had uh, not uh, the last name, I had the name of a serious person. So I went a meeting with the mayor, I went to the Britain, one of another, the Britain, that is too good, like, or call me, she, you know. So I sit there, there, and there was Mr. Coca. I said, uh, sir, the Britain, one of another, the Britain, but not what I say, this. So uh, 
uh, you wanted to do the marathon, I explained what I wanted to do and so on. And uh, Mr. Coker said, uh, of course you have experience in this kind of events. I said, no, I have experience, I was general manager of a company, so I can organize a team. I make wonderful parties, the <laughs> organizational skill, but I never organize an art. So, Pampri Mato said, okay, but I know that there is Mr. Cordini, Mr. Zadovek, yes, the best people. Okay, for sure. And uh, Pancapalbo, but tell me, what do you want to do? Which is the profile? And then, honestly, I didn't know. And then I said, uh, uh, you know, Pamprimator, uh, I don't know, a little bit, Iago, New York City Marathon will be on Oakley. Ah, <laughs> Pamprimator, and in his mind, stood about set lady, sweating, arriving, forgotten in a park, you know, in Stomotka, in Prague. So the second one, and he was, uh, his eyes were becoming bigger like this, you know. And then he made the last question, but he was uh, almost afraid to make this question, no? And he said, so, Pancapalbo, colleague reading is the good And I said, I don't know, Pancapalbo, we produce for partners this is maybe. Maybe they will come. I said, oh my God. But he said, immediately, he was scared. I said, go out. If it's unsuccess, you must leave the country before the day. I said, cheated. <laughs> Or with the first sponsor, my friends, uh, this is a uh, Skoro Komitsky Divado, what I'm telling you now. Because, uh, of course, when we started, uh, uh, I was uh, supported indeed by Neil Zadovek, those people, not. Uh, so we had um, some sponsors, uh, we went to talk, one was Coca Cola. But after one month that we launched this, there was somebody. That ah, uh, Udiyalame Marathon, a competitor that came out, the Czechoslovak Kancelarz, basically came out and they were bringing some people and they want to organize a marathon. So there was a Mara Fronta Cavallo Mafia. If my father is in the series, I said, Oh my God, what I have done? I have very far away from Mafia, but Cavallo Mafia. So after a few weeks, it was clear. So. All the sponsors said, no, no, we don't want uh, nothing to do with the mafia. So I had to go to see the sponsors. And I went, uh, me, and you need to understand that the first year was uh, myself, my wife, who was the financial manager. Then there was a girl uh, that was watching our kids of her living with us. She was expo manager. <laughs> then, then there was my neighbor, and she was a sport manager. So we did really, okay. So I went to Coca-Cola together with my colleague, so the big boss of Coca-Cola, he said everything is clear, and so on, Mr. Capallo, we had the doubts, but now everything was really clean, and so on, and so on. And I started to shake when I understood that the man in front of me ran the marathon. I did not know anything about the marathon. Really, of course, a general culture of sport, but not who is the world record, who is this, who is this, no? And the man in front of me said, oh, I run about 25 miles a day, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and he, did, he made me the questions. After all was closed, you know? And you, please uh, just uh, see the, the, the scene, yeah? All was closed, we were on the table, okay, I was closing my paper then, you know, they signed, I hope they don't change idea. And then the man asked me, and uh, Mr. Capalbo, who is coming to run? I had a few seconds of a blackout. <laughs> Panic! Who is coming to run? And my mouth started to move by itself. I was not commanding my mouth. And my mouth came out some names, I don't remember which name. <laughs> they were super strange names, because like you know, all the winners are from Africa, they took value. So I said three names, one, two, and I said, looking this always in a fraction of a second. And then the man said, ah, they are very, very good at <laughs> I ran out. Hoping that this man, so outside, I was working with my colleague, you know, when you 
watch and you cannot laugh, but you are going to laugh in the elevator like this, we see if any kind of <laughs> those kind of things. This is exciting. No? This is when you have a vision and you need to carry on. Because if not, you don't eat. Sorry that I am so trivial. You believe in something, you need to believe all yourself. And uh, I don't want to be right, but if you strongly believe in something, you will succeed. Before or after, there must be some luck, there must be some combination, there must be, I don't know, you meet somebody that today is happy and not uh, unhappy, but will come. Yeah? Even though risking to lose the face as I, I was almost doing, and I did a few other times. So it was an exciting job. Na vás apeloval, dostal jsem kontakt z režii od našeho šéfa, že si nemáte opravdu bát a klidně toho zkuste použít třeba v češtině. Já věřím, že pan Kapal buď bude rozumět, nebo mu to přeložíme. Takže pokud máte nějaké otázky, tak jsem s nimi, jak nadávám, pouze přes slajdu. A pokud ne, výborně. Takže jsem is one of the most liberal nations. I'm not sure about that, and I don't know <laughs> why you think so. Because uh, you, you had uh, what's happened last, uh, on the, uh, last week. No, I, I think that uh, Czech Republic is one of the most liberal, progressive, human, still human and uh, beautiful country. Yeah? Uh, there is only one difference between uh, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and now. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, Czech Republic, the people knew before uh, Mr. Havel, and then uh, Czech Republic, uh, Prague, and Brno. Because uh, we had uh, a very strong uh, moral authority. When this gentleman was talking, all the people, not only only Czechs, but all the world was listening, and uh, was listening with uh, respect. And of course, this had an impact on all over the country, yeah? because uh, the people uh, felt to live uh, in an uh, upgrading uh, uh, you know, phase of their life, the country was uh, flourishing, <coughs> the country was, uh, you know, progressing, uh, and, and so, and is still like this. Maybe one thing, and I'm talking uh, more as a Czech than non-Czech now, because I love this country and this is my own. Maybe we miss uh, a quid, we miss some uh, spublik now, we miss some uh, vision. How come one third of the students that they finish the university in medicine, they wanted to go abroad. And how come that uh, another third after three years they wanted to go study and working abroad? How come that other people, maybe among yourself, you wanted to, to go abroad? Of course it's nice to go abroad to make an experience. I, I advise you to do it. But I don't need to go abroad because in my country I cannot find the same level of professionality and so on. I think here there is the same level of professionality, maybe not the same salary. But so what I would love to see, uh, a little bit a vision for the country that I think the country is missing and the people here are missing. So it's still the most liberal, one of the most liberal. Is still one of the most progressive. Is still one of the most beautiful. But from exceptional, we are becoming normal. Yeah. So what we would need to work all together for some zeal, yeah, for some goal, for some vision, and work as a country, not. Uh, uh, I brought it with somebody else or with. Uh, our uh, establishment of politicians that sometimes they don't give the right representation of the country.
Yeah? And when Abel was here, we had this moral authority. Because wherever we go, we were respected because of Czech. Yeah? This is my opinion. Sorry. I don't know if uh, I answer. You, are, you don't agree that it's one of the most free countries in the world? Yes, it is, but in the mind of people, then it's already worse because yeah, uh, the majority of people is not prepared to, to take responsibility for their own life, but the, to plan but her, uh, their future and so on. Don't you think that what I said before is also almost connected? Why you, you don't want to do, not you, why somebody doesn't want to take responsibility? Because I take responsibility if uh, I understand, which is the risk, I can measure it, and I am not alone. I have my parta, my group, my scupina, and together we take responsibility. I think what uh, we need to uh, do it, uh, what we miss uh, is a, a, a global vision. What will be, if I ask you, what will be Czech Republic in 10 years, 15 years? The industrial Switzerland of Europe, the most uh, pleasant uh, place uh, in Europe for the Morena, the most active country in Europe, what will be? You know, I now, in this period, I find difficulties to define the future, the brand, the shape, intellectual shape of Czech Republic in the future. I think uh, we need, but the life of a country is like the life of Rodina, your life, my life. You know, we have up and down. I am sure because uh, we have an immense assets that is you, the civil society. The civil society in this country is the best assets. Yeah? And uh, sometimes I am upset with my friends which belong to the civil society, and I talk about politics. I say, I'm a politic, I'm an Yes. What is an animal Yes? It's national Yes. Because politics is how we pay the danya, how we travel, how we find our job, how we find good university, how we find good perspective. So I think that uh, in the next uh, exchange, next one week, maybe, I don't know. But I think that this is what we need right now. This is not a running opinion, but it's a like, citizen of Czech Republic opinion. And now you don't have a question from the best uh, Czech runner. That, uh, you know this gentleman? Uh, this gentleman, may I make a small, short introduction of you? I met, uh, when we met last time in Berlin, because he was uh, competing in Berlin, that is the fastest marathon on the, on the Vesgiete, and uh, um, uh, Ilka uh, ran all our races. Uh, he is the fastest right now, the fastest long distance running together with another uh, friend and companion. So one time he win, the other time the other win. So there are three or four top runners in, in uh, Czech Republic. And Birka is not only sitting here, he's from Brno, or Blisko, Brno, most Blisko. So he's a moral man who should be funny, you know? <laughs> že pokud ne, tak začnu nějakou startovací, možná to bez něj takové pokryše, ale co to pro tebe znamená běhat rančenky? Já myslím, že to možná musí pro sportovce stát se jakoby tváří takového závodu, nebo být jedním z nejrychlejších asi velká čest, ale jak to vnímáš ty? Já bych chtěl říct, že to je pro mě úplně nejvíc, co to pro mě může být, protože ty závody jsou strašně dobře zorganizovány díky Karlovi a jeho organizačnímu týmu a hlavně tam je atmosféra těch diváků a a celkově, která nás prostě žene dopředu a jak říkal, prostě tam jsou ty emoce a máme to v tom jako srdci. Po tom závodě si to pamatuju, třeba když je nějaký závod, já nevím, třeba tady v lese, někdo tam třeba není, není tam ta atmosféra, tak, tak to třeba není ono, ale tady prostě, tam je, to máte náboje. Takže, tak. 
Co se týká konkurence v Česku, ty ještě běháš, jestli se nepletu s kocourkem taky? Je tam ještě ten třetí, čtvrtý. To je ten třetí, čtvrtý ještě možná, kteří tam běhají s vámi. A jak se, jak se dělí to ty první příčky? Věřím, že to asi trošičku míchá, nejsi každý rok asi tím nejvíklejší v Česku. Nebo jestli tak se omlouvám. <laughs> Jenom za poslední tři roky, tak maraton jsme vždycky nejrychlejší. Jinak na těch kratších tratích na půl maraton, tak tam třeba Honza Dreisinger, Vítěl Babišta, Milan za tu desítku, takže my se pod takový mícháme, střídáme se to, to bude první, do druhé, do třetí. Tak. Já si nebudu tak pořád jenom, že jo, vždycky. <laughs> Tak jo, tak další otázka, která mě napadá, jak se ty spolupracuje s Karlem Kapalovým? Jestli tady vůbec nějaké větší spolupráce dochází, krom toho, že ti zavolá, ale běžíme za týden ranček, tak doufám, že přijdeš. Tak my se potkáváme hlavně na těch závodech, toho rančeku, před závodem, po závodě. Vlastně Karlo je celý, celý závod v oblasti toho startu a cíle, kde prostě fakt je všechny diváků, což je taky vám prostě skvělé. Takže to tvoří vlastně i toho posledního, takže toho si velmi vážím. Pane, že prostě takový srdce. A... A tak. <laughs> no. Si říkám, jestli mm, má ještě smysl udělat některou otázek na slajdu, protože mám pocit, že Karlo na mnoho z nich v průběhu svého povídání už odpověděl. A říkám si, jestli už taky neodpovídal na to, co byla největší překážka před organizací. Myslím, že v tom prvním ročníku možná. Zorganizovat to, ale anyway, what was the greatest obstacle when starting organizing running events in Czech Republic? A question from Slido. It was uh, self-government of the cities or something else, a mentality maybe? At, at, at the beginning, uh, of course, uh, uh, when you start something new, uh, you need to explain basically to people. So it was difficult to educate those uh, bodies, those institutions and to explain. The secret, the trick, was to invite them to run. <laughs> so, so they felt involved, and uh, some of them to to take them as uh, on the on the wings of enthusiasm, on the wings of uh, fun, of run, not to, to tell them that this is uh, you know pure sport competition and so on, but it is more a social gathering, and uh, that is the way to get them close to you. Yeah. And of course, there were a bit uh, some obstacle. Uh, I know almost every city in the Czech Republic, ulice by ulice, corner by corner, where is the tramway, where not. <laughs> and so uh, you need to study because when you go to talk to the police or the primary public, you must be very well prepared. So one big task was to know meter by meter every city in order to propose things that would uh, reduce the impact for the people and at the same time we would uh, keep, keep uh, the trasa competitive for Svietovi uh, quality action. In the future, are you planning to invite some more Czech professional runners to accompany Jirka, Milan, etc.? For example, uh, from Ostrava, Jakub Zemani, one of the best uh, junior runners, long distance runners. It, 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 I not only hope, but my dream, my dear friends, is that one day we will have a new uh, Zato. <coughs> my dream, uh, because uh, now the problem is that uh, the white uh, Europeans or uh, Northern Hemisphere, they have a different uh, style than uh, uh, Eastern Africans or South America. So that is the reason why they win, and we we not yet. But uh, what is happening in the Czech Republic with, uh, with the young uh, uh, runners is happening that is a phenomenon not only for us, but is a phenomenon also for them. So we see more and more uh, people that they show a good attitude in running and will not be next year but in some years for sure we will improve also the competitive side it, and we can compete on, compete on the same level with uh, the best uh, in the world. Of course what we have special programs, we favor uh, Czech runners, we work with them in order to improve their time, we follow them when they are junior 
we have a program that is called Marathon Ops, uh, where uh, there are kids of 12, 13 years that we support with uh, equipment, uh, with uh, small money, in order for them to train. We support the coach. And one of the also nice success we had is uh, Aneska Drahotova, because she was uh, supported by us five years when she was a small girl, and now she's uh, maybe an Olympic medal. So. <coughs> Nemáme žádné další otázky, protože pokud ne, tak si myslím, že asi jsme... Nemáme. Skončili jsou Mr. Capaldo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you.